In West Virginia, we're dealing with uh, the, the scandal that uh, surrounding the former bishop. Um, and so my uh, coming here, I was uh, anxious to be able to present kind of my conclusions about that, how he might go about, he might go about making amends, which the Pope had asked me to, or told me to be involved in, you know. And so I was able to, at least to get a good meeting with the uh, the uh, Cardinal Prefect of the uh, Congregation for Bishops, Cardinal uh, Mark Wiet. Uh, we had a good, good discussion. Uh, Archbishop Laurie of Baltimore uh, accompanied me into that discussion. So we think we well, had some good uh, conversation about that, that matter. I was there really in a supportive role as, as the Metropolitan. He was able to build on some of the reforms which were put in place in the interim. So during the interim, I was able to expand and strengthen the Finance Council, expand and strengthen and get them to meet much, much more often, uh, to put in uh, a new auditor, to um, revive many of the diocesan policies that had fallen into disuse, particularly the processes around capital projects, um, to close down the Bishop's Fund. Uh, first I suspended it and then I closed it down. Also to sell the Bishop's House, which was a source of, um, of uh, I think, much rightful discontent among the, the people. And so I was able to do a certain amount, but what Bishop Brennan is doing now is making not only those things permanent, but taking a much deeper dive into the financial picture of the diocese going back and uh, beginning to put into place things that will not only secure reform, but make it much deeper uh, going forward. I pray every day that there will be healing and renewal in the diocese, and they're very good people, and they deserve the very best of pastoral leadership.